everybody, welcome back to Northern Lions Challenge Runs in the Binding of Eyes. We've got a run today. Might be able to guess the name. I'll give you three, two, one. Just look at the title at the top of the screen, you dangas. It's like a boss. So we have a lot of boss items with us today. This was suggested by YouTube user Mikey Felcher. So we have the Peeper, which is Peeper's Eyes. It's colloquially known. Monstro's Tooth, Little Gish, Little Steven, and Little Chad. You know what? We should probably give ourselves a Little Chub if I can find it here. I assume it's under L, Little Chubby. Yeah. I don't understand why we wouldn't take Little Chub in addition to this. This is another boss item. Thank you, Mikey Felcher. For this challenge run suggestion. I don't know why, but Mikey Felcher sounds like the ultimate, like, kid's name from, like, a 90s children's movie that I would have watched. Like, in a, like a Goonies type? I guess that's technically 80s. Or, I don't know, like a Home Alone 5 or something? I don't know. So I apologize if that is indeed your real name. Not because of what I said, but because of the fact that your parents named you after you were conceived while watching Macaulay Culkin shave. In any case, we're going to continue onwards here. Uh, the only rules for this run, we are starting with some pretty solid items. Uh, the compensation, and I appreciate I appreciate that um, Mike decided to give me my own discretion on this, basically. But it does leave things a little open-ended. But he did say, just take no OP items. So I can't take any overpowered items. But, uh, you know, if we're talking about overpowered items, we know them when we see them. I think Spirit of the Night should probably be off the table. Brimstone and Mom's Knife, obviously. Quad Shot, I would say. We'll, we'll draw the line at, like, Triple Shot. Triple Shot's okay, Quad Shot is not okay. Polyphemus is obviously off the table as well. Things like technology, I think those are A-OK. -okay. Um, similarly, I mean, we can't really talk about spacebar items because we can't get rid of our existing spacebar item anyway as we have to stick with the theme of the run, of course. Uh, but, you know, things like the nail, of course, would be overpowered. It kind of lends itself to uh, an interesting discussion, which I assume is going to happen in the comments, as to what qualifies as overpowered and what doesn't. Again, I would just like to reiterate, as always, uh, that I'm not trying to cheat the populace if I end up taking an item you guys think is overpowered, but for whatever reason I have deemed it to be not. Uh, it's not my intention to be, like, unethical in these challenge runs. Or, again, cheat the system. It's more just my intention to simplify them to a certain extent and make things easier for everyone involved. I've already lost, like, almost all of the spirit arts that we've gotten. Obviously, I'm still continuing here because I want to make sure that, if possible, uh, I can go to the item rooms. I mean, we are starting with four familiars here, one of which I don't really like. Uh, one of which I like a great deal, and then two of which I think are alright. You can probably sort those out for yourself. Don't pick up the tick. Uh, and Monstro's Tooth, which is an okay spacebar item, but not a great one as we get further and further into the game. There's a single key. That's a good start. Uh, maybe this will be... Balls of Steel. Okay, that's pretty good, too. I didn't have an answer for maybe this will be, by the way, so I'm glad that the game interrupted me. And there's a second key, so we will be able to go to both item rooms. Whether or not they're useful remains to be seen, however. Uh, I'm glad that we have them regardless. This is a big floor, but it is also uh, an XL floor, so we are going to basically be doing uh, double duty with respect to our efficiency here. Peeper's Eye pretty much solved all of our problems for us there. I can't believe that Chad, or sorry, Chubb took so long to fire. Again, prepare for the Chubb and Chad mistakes. Just conti to uh, continue ad nauseum here. There's going to be more Chad mistakes than the 2000 election. hi <laughs> oh Timely humor here on YouTube.com slash Northern Lion. Many of you watching this probably were not even alive in the 2000 election, or during the 2000 election. Uh, which makes me feel kind of old, but, you know. I also hate when people who are still fairly young say that they're old. Like, I'm, I just turned 24, like, two months ago. Sometimes I catch myself thinking, like, oh, I'm getting so old, and then I'm like, wait a minute, no you're not, you're fucking 24, you're still young. And that's not you're still young in, like, the way that an, an aging beauty queen tells herself that. You know, like, you're still young, baby, don't worry, guys still want to fuck you. 24 is still young, I, but as you get older, of course, I think that shifts. Like, now I'm thinking, I, I'm going to start to feel like I'm old when I hit, like, 35, maybe 40, but I'm sure when I'm 40, I'm going to be like, ah, you know, you're not old until you're 60. I, this penis still works, I assure you that. In any case, we're going to open up. Apparently, that's all that being old means to me, is that you, you can't have sex anymore, or people don't want to have sex with you. In any case, that's quad shot in here. So fitting that that is where I chose to draw the line. I would love to pick it up, but sadly I'm going to stick to my principles, and we are going to fight both of our bosses here. I will choose which one to use Monstro's Tooth on. I probably should have, in hindsight, uh, fought one of the bosses, used Monstro's Tooth, then explored the rest of the floor in order to get uh, as many possible charges on that Monstro's Tooth as was possible. However, it's not really a big deal in the whole scheme of things. In any case, mid-twenty-somethings and around that age, stop complaining like you're old, you're not old, man. You're just trying to get some attention and complain for no reason, even though your life is probably pretty good most of the time. Of course, disregard that sentence if you have some kind of, like, debilitating disease or, you know, are impoverished. I 
respect that those are all legitimate conditions. So we got some extra health upgrades here. That's good. We're going to be fighting uh, LJ here, who is going to die in like two seconds. We don't even need to use Monstro's Tooth. You might be saying, why not use it anyway? Uh, well, maybe we can use it on a room on the next floor and then use it on the boss on the next floor as well. So here is our HP upgrade. We got two HP upgrades, which is awesome. And then in Satan's room, Brimstone and Demon Baby. You might be saying, why not take Demon Baby? The reason is because I'm already so close to the cap on familiars. Uh, we already have four, not counting the uh, bomb bag, that I don't want to... I believe the cap is five, but it might be five that shoot. I can't remember. Anyway, I'm just playing it on the safe side, basically. Uh, and not taking any more familiars, just in case I have the opportunity to get a familiar for free a little bit later. Who knows? Right? So I'm trying to get a little chubby ready here to take a shot, and he actually did a very good job. Thank you, little chubby. We're going to take some shots at our torsos here. Well, they're not really torsos. I guess they're just heads. They're, in fact, the exact opposite of torsos. Pop up, please. There we go. Uh, we are going to be at our boss room right away, which is not really that important, but considering we have Monstro's Tooth available, might as well fight the boss right now and then feel free to use the item for the rest of the floor. I'm definitely suffering from too good to use syndrome right now. That will change, uh, hopefully once I beat Fistula. Fistula, not a very good boss to use Monstro's Tooth against, uh, but better than nothing, I suppose. Especially if I require a little bit of crowd control. And once we get some, uh, Silkworms coming out here, why don't we just drop a fat Monstro's Tooth in the middle? It at least killed one Silkworm for me. Simplified the whole situation a little bit. Our item is going to be another HP upgrade, which is beautiful. I'm not even sure what I could get from Deals with the Devil at this point that would actually benefit me. I think taking Guppy's Paw and turning all of my Red Hearts into Spirit Hearts is the, the best possible option for me. I don't think Guppy's Paw is an overpowered item in the context that I would use it for, at least. Some people may disagree, but again, you know, you, I respect your right to do so. You absolutely have that option. I am going to be hoping for some kind of damage upgrades. Triple shot or piercing shot would also be absolutely welcome. A lot of potential. Oh, God. Get out of here. Well, there goes one spirit heart, sadly. Um, there's a lot of uh, potential great items that we can't take. How about the miter and the relic? I think those should be on the table. Those are not game breaking. When it says OP items, I'm assuming he means ones that give me like a plus 50% chance of beating the game. So brimstone, mom's knife, etc., etc. Even Spirit of the Night is not, I don't know, it's kind of overpowered. It's on the borderline. I already said I wouldn't take it, though, so I'm not going to take it. Uh, we need a key at some point, please. But, um, what was I going to say? Other flying items might be okay. I guess if I'm not going to take Spirit of the Night, I shouldn't take Holy Grail either, but anyway. Uh, we have the S-Shot Wiggle Worm, which is a very strange, kind of bad item, I think. I don't think... Wiggle Worm is particularly good. What we should do, I guess we can't do it there. We'll do it closer to uh, our assortment of health up here. We might as well play the Blood Bank a few times. I think we have like one and a half hearts in that boss room. So we might as well get a little low here. Uh, if we can't get a Blood Bag, at the very least we can get some more money. All right, so we picked up three or four cents there in the whole scheme of things. It's not a huge deal, but who knows? Maybe we'll be able to buy something awesome from the shop. Should we ever be in a situation where we have more than enough keys to survive? I was off by half a heart. We could backtrack a little bit, but again, not totally necessary, I think, given uh, our relative current safety. So we're on Caves Part 2. Everything's going reasonably well so far. Might seem like we've gotten not great items so far, and you're not necessarily wrong. Uh, but the thing is, we did start with a few familiars, which gives us a little bit of an advantage over uh, a normal Isaac run at this point. Although that advantage is quickly going to erode as things move forward, unless we get some items that uh, benefit us a little bit. That's really the most intriguing part of this run, is that idea that I can't take any items uh, that are OP. Because it is kind of at my own discretion, and that's simultaneously worrying, but also uh, gives me a lot of freedom. But uh, that's probably going to be where the, the run diverges from, you know, the literal interpretation. Please give me a single key. Uh, two keys would be awesome. I have the money to go to the shop, but, you know, I'd be happy with one. Let's just be contented with adequacy. Which is pretty much the real Northern Lion story. Content with adequacy. The Northern Lion story. How to not completely waste your potential. That probably rings true for a lot of people watching this. Not to make it too dark or anything. Uh, we are going to pick up. We got a lot of uh, weird drops there. Like pennies dropping all over the room. And the bomb bag gave us an extra bomb at the conclusion of that room. Which is good because, you know, we are going to look for the secret room. Which I should have done on the last floor. Don't worry, I will go back and pick up that money. Since we don't have anything better to do with our cash right now, we might as well play Judgment. I'm assuming Judgment is not going to give us a key, but that opportunity does exist. 
Uh, don't knock this out of the way. Oh! Oh, we're okay. The bomb's done. Oh, Peeper's Eye, don't! Okay, that was close. If it knocked it closer, it could have killed Judgment, which would have been bad for me. Now, what do I want from Judgment? Our health is actually really good right now. I wouldn't look be like pissed off if he gave us an HP upgrade, but a compass would be better. Steam sail, you know, we're early enough that it also has the potential to be useful, but that's all gonna rely on us actually having the ability to get some goddamn keys. And we are gonna be fighting Pestilence. I might as well just drop the Monstro on him, basically. He's gonna die very quickly regardless, because he basically stands still, which makes him very easy to hit with little chubby. And we will get a cube of meat. No deal with the devil. Which, again, frees me from any kind of decision-making responsibility right here, which is good. I'm okay with that, even though uh, we're still a little bit underpowered. Obviously, the cube of meat is not going to do too much to change that. I would love to pick up battery or, you know, 9-volt or nun's habit or compass, even ladder in the shop. In fact, this might be one of those situations where if I get a key, uh, I would go to the shop as opposed to going to the item room. It's kind of hard to tell when the enemies are coming because, like, I, it might sound silly, but there's so much shit on the screen, thanks to my familiars, that it's a little difficult. Thankfully, I was able to open up a seam there so I could actually dodge. I oftentimes get hit on the room with the same layout as this. We will open this because we need to get keys if possible. Just bombs and money. Not bad, but we really don't need money, and our bomb situation is A-OK. -okay. It's unlikely we'll get keys in the secret room should we find it. But it's not out of the- oh, I let myself get trapped. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, but it's not out of the question. Maybe we get a slot machine. We are able to pick up some keys. Maybe we get a fortune teller. We're able to pick up a uh, flat penny or something. I don't know. There's still a few outs for us. We can't necessarily say that we're not going to be able to go to the item room or the shop on this floor. Uh, more health and more bombs, thankfully. Appreciate it, troll engine. I got enough bombs to last me probably through to the mom's heart boss fight because we're never coming across tinted rocks. There's our secret room. It contains just money as well. This would be a good situation to have bum friend, I think. We're gonna bust open this fire here. Nothing contained therein. Alright, so we probably have like two rooms left to go. Maybe three if we're lucky. One of the few situations where I do actually want as many rooms as is possible. Don't worry, I'm gonna start using Monstro 2, or Monstro's Tooth, I should say, more often. Uh, once we, oh god damn it. Once we uh, progress a little bit further, but sadly, that is going to mark the end of this floor with basically nothing to show for. We picked up a single cube of meat and might have lost a spirit heart over the course of the whole, whole thing. So Caves Part 2, completely bereft of keys top to bottom unless I'm missing one in the second secret room. But I'm not going to waste 30 bombs to look for it because I don't have 30 bombs. Doesn't that sound like the N Sync song? Pop? It's like, ooh, 30 bombs. I don't know. I'm trying here. Struggling for some original <laughs> commentary at this point in my Isaac career. Obviously, the, the downside of Monstro's Tooth is that it's really largely best used in situations where uh, it's like a one target foe. We might end up fighting, you know, like a peep or something on this floor that would make it really useful. But on these rooms with a lot of flies, Monstro's Tooth is not a, a useful item, really. Uh, we Oh, it might be here, though. We at least took out one of those guys, which is probably going to reduce the chances of us getting hit a surprising amount. So, I'm happy with the usage there. I mean, I should use it more often. Monstro's Tooth only takes three rooms to charge, if I remember correctly. Three to four. Uh, and we do have our boss room right here. It's an interesting kind of nexus that we've got in front of us. Uh, I'm probably going to go to the mob trap room as well. I'm not going to open that golden chest, because it's just too risky, unfortunately. But we're going to go to the boss room first. And we're going to get something from Little Guy. I probably should have waited. I should have gone to the mob trap room so I can get Monstro's Tooth stored up and probably do way more damage to Gish all at once. Um, but we're probably gonna get something different from Gish than Little Gish, because we already have Little Gish, obviously. Uh, which is weird because Little Gish is doing the slowing effect on Gish, which doesn't make any sense at all. And if I say Gish again, I'm gonna go cross-eyed in all likelihood, so we're just gonna basically continue our fight here. Uh, the main determiner of our success, or speeder up- wow, that was a good shot. I couldn't see it because it blended in with the, the creep that Gish creates. Um... Thank you, little Gish, for slowing Gish just in time uh, for me to not be able to move out of the way. In any case, this fight should be over now. We get an HP upgrade. That's cool enough. We're going to get back to full health. And with seven hearts, I mean, we're going to go places in this game. I'm not sure where, but places will be gone to. Um, here's the thing. Going to the item room is probably our safe bet. Going to the shop is high risk. But could possibly work out for us uh, if we don't end up fighting greed or something like that. Although sometimes when you fight greed, not only do you get money, but you get a key kind of in compensation for the fact that you spent one going into the room as well. 
Uh, we're gonna pop this open and pick up this key. So now we don't have to worry about that. We can go to the item room in addition to the shop. What do we find in here? Magnet! So that means... Oh, don't shoot me. Thank you, fire. Uh, this means that things like the ladder are probably not nearly as useful anymore. Or bombs, really, because we can just do that. Uh, we're just gonna look for the shop, and then we're gonna bounce from this floor, which has actually been reasonably good to us. I, I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth with respect to an HP upgrade and magnet, which is... Uh, not a great item, not a huge determiner of our success, but also, you know, not uh, a bad item. At least it's not. A, at least it's an item we can take. There is a tinted rock in here. You know, it'd be a good item for beginning Isaac players. An item that made like tinted rocks glow when you walked into the room. That would probably solve a lot of problems for for new players. I don't even know if I had to use. Uh, oh, I did have to use my bomb. What was I thinking? The magnet was going to extract the tinted or the spirit heart from the tinted rock. Strikes me as a little unlikely, Northern Lion. Beginning to think you don't know what all these items do. Could use this Two of Hearts card at a... Here's the thing. We have the Steam Sale. We should go to the shop before we play Judgment. Who knows? Maybe we'll fight Greed and get more money. Well, that's exactly how that shit's gonna go down. We already have the Steam Sale, so I'm assuming Greed is just gonna give us cash money. Oh, that's bad damage to take. I really thought he would be slowed more. Uh, so we lost half a Spirit Heart there, but we gained a lot of money, so we should be able to get something from Judgment. Again... Ladder is now down in usefulness. Compass is way up. HP upgrades would be cool. Just don't give me a spacebar item and everything will be hunky-dory. Keys also incredibly beneficial. So we're going to play him. It might take us, you know, two or three minutes here. The Magician is a useless card. I might as well just pop that on this room because we already have Little Steven. I mean, it doesn't make our shots homing. Little Steven doesn't, I mean. Uh, but at the same time, I just don't want that Magician to be in the way and constantly be switching between two of hearts and the Magician. Come on, Judgment. There we go. He's going to give us Book of Revelations. We're not going to take it, but we are going to pick it up and just take one Spirit Heart for it. Was it worth the 14 cents that I spent for it? You know, in all the whole scheme of things, you might think I'm being facetious when I say this, but probably. Uh, like, we're probably not going to use that money for anything else anyway, so it's not necessarily a, a bad thing to get. Now, I am going to use our golden, or our key. I should, maybe I should just save our key for the next floor. That's probably the smart thing to do. Considering we do have a shop and a an item room on the next floor. Typical Northern Lion complains about keys, gets one surplus key, and was just about to waste it on a golden chest. Might not have been a waste, but in all likelihood. That was probably the the most likely situation, is that I would just pop open a chest, it would be like half a red heart and three cents, and I'd be like, oh. Well, we got Judgment again. Uh, we are going to play Judgment, the thinking being, even if we use all of our money here, uh, then I can still use this key to go to the shop, and this is basically like a mini shop that we have here. But he's actually going to give us another key, which is going to allow us to go... Another two keys, actually, which is going to allow us to do uh, some other awesome stuff. We got the Joker! We're definitely going to use that. We'll come back for this Two of Hearts card, if necessary. But in the meantime, we're just going to continue playing Judgment. He's going to give us the Nun's Habit. That was probably the best Judgment we possibly could have hoped for. So let's pop this Joker card quickly. We're going to get the Bible in the deal with the Angel Room, which is worthless for us. Come back down here. Don't lose a spirit heart. Lost a spirit heart. Got the two of hearts card, though. Was it worth it? Maybe. Can't necessarily say no. I can't believe I got hit there. I didn't even see the bullets. Again, I had so many followers that sometimes it's hard to see on screen. So many familiars, if you will. When I say so many followers, I can't help but feel that somebody is just, like, keeping this on in the background and thinks, like, I'm really fucking, like, proud of my Twitter account or something. I don't know. Thank you, Magnet, for giving me that Spirit Heart back. We're going to be able to buy the Compass in here, as well as a Spirit Heart and a Bomb, if we so chose. But we're not going to buy that Bomb. That was... So far, this floor has been very good to us. We got Nun's Habit, Compass, and a Spirit Heart. Now, sadly, uh, the way to the boss room is not exactly the same as the way to the item room. There is... That could be a Greed, or it could just be a normal mini-boss. And uh, by this point, I should use one key to open this golden chest, just to see. Because we do have enough keys to go to the item room, regardless, anyway. It's gonna give us a matchstick. Well, I guess it's worth taking for a couple rooms. Not that we need the extra bombs, as we do have the bomb bag, but, you know. That's what I mean, and I, I basically wasted uh, a single key there. But in this situation, it's not as bad, because uh, our judgment gave us so many keys. Oh, over the whole course of this game. Anyway, so I lost a spirit heart there. That was terrible damage to take. And we're gonna get Mom's Knife. That is definitely an OP item. As much as I hate to admit it and would love to take it. We are going to be fighting Super Envy here. So what I'm going to do, I think we have the opportunity to get an Attack Fly, which is excellent. I'm going to try to split these up as much as possible, and then we're going to drop Monstro's Tooth. I've been getting a lot of enemies. A lot of bosses, you know, Fistula, now Super Envy. Uh, 
that don't really benefit from using Monstro's Tooth that much, and that's unfortunate, because it's an item that, you know, un in certain conditions can actually be really value- Oh my god, thank you Nunsabbit for at least helping me out a little bit here. Uh, during my time of dire need, because I've lost all of my spirit arts that I picked up, to at least give us an attack flying compensation for this room. I would greatly appreciate it. Nope. Single penny. Fair trade, I guess. We're gonna make our way to the boss room now, having basically been demoralized by the easiest enemy. Well, not the easiest enemy, but a not a difficult enemy. We are on Necropolis, though. You know, things get real here. Depending on the amount of damage that you're doing. We're not dealing a whole lot of damage. I wish a couple of those stat upgrades, or health upgrades, also came with tears upgrades or damage upgrades a la meat. Uh, but sadly, you know, we can't choose what we get and what we don't get. Especially now that we do not have the D6. We're just rolling with Monstro's Tooth here. It's probably a Monstro's Tooth worthy room. I used it also, not just because it's probably going to get charged, but because the Nun's Habit is going to allow me to... Uh... Did I get hit again? I must have gotten hit again by something. I don't know what though. I didn't see it happen. Um, but yeah, we're probably going to get hit, so Nun's Habit is going to be able to charge. Let's see what we got here. Bad gas, not that good. Two of hearts, still really valuable. The longer we can save that, the better it gets, obviously. So let's use it immediately on this Demon Judgment to see if we can get a sweet item. Might not be the best idea. We can play Demon Judgment twice. No, we can't. I thought we could. We can't. Okay. Uh, I should double our hearts right now because I've already effed it up a little bit. And if we get more hearts before the Mom's Heart boss fight, I will probably trade them in at that Demon Judgment because I'm an idiot. But also because, you know, the potential for a sweet-ass item from Demon Judgment is just too good to pass up. Don't- I knew I was gonna get hit there. That was, oh, don't get hit again. Just open up a seam. This is easy. They've got a little chubby too. That was close. Seriously, just kill one of them. There we go. Now you've got a much easier path to victory here. Taking them out one by one and not having to deal with as much bullshit along the way. There we go. Treasure chest that we cannot get to. I am down on hearts now, which means Demon Judgment is probably not in the cards anymore. Um... We can do this, we just gotta do it slowly. Peeper's eye. Oh, there's a hit. I probably should have just used Monstro's Tooth once then. Now they're starting to chase me. I should lived in relative seclusion for a while, but the hearts have figured me out. Actually, this room has not gone so bad in the whole scheme of things. Just stay away from the masks and we're good. Alright. So we're gonna be fighting Mom here. Obviously, we're gonna pop Monstro's Tooth as soon as possible. It did actually a lot of damage, despite not being able to see the foot, which is surprising to me. Uh, thank you, Mom, for killing basically everything evil that we came across there. Much appreciated. Mom is basically dead. Wow, this has gone much more quickly than I would have expected given the items that we have. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's causing the speed of this uh, victory for us. I guess it's not over yet, so I shouldn't get too cocky. Monstro's Tooth did a lot of good stuff for us, though. I should definitely kill the ooze guy. More feet, please. Thank you. Also the name of my new pornography site. Drop Monstro's Tooth again, and that'll do it. So we get a range upgrade. Not really that good in the whole scheme of things. And the Polaroid. Can we succeed in this run? Like a boss? Um, possibly. Sorry for the, the dark tonal shift there. Uh, I honestly don't know. Oh, that was really stupid. I'll, I'll tell you what was going on in my brain in a second there. I was thinking, I just need to stand next to this doppelganger. But then I realized the brain guy was coming for me. And if I'm going to kill the brain guy, I have to shoot. So then I decided, let's shoot, and then I ended up letting the doppelganger shoot us, basically. Please take out the laser for- oh! And then run immediately into the diglets. Okay. It's okay, though. The diglets are gonna die, and in doing so, we'll be at one step closer to the boss room, and one health closer to being dead. But we do see the boss room, thanks to the compass, which, again, I cannot overstate how important that item is. It might seem super boring. But if you've ever played the, you know, the Legend of Zelda games, you know how important the compass can be to your overall success. I hope I can survive Utero 1. If I can't, that'll be pretty embarrassing. Again, just, I, there's so much shit on the screen that normally, when you play Isaac, the way you find enemies is just like, what's moving faster than me? Not always moving faster, but what's, what's moving that isn't me is maybe a better way to put that. Uh, that doesn't work in this situation, because the followers or familiars that you have are all up in your grill all the time. So we're using Monstro's Tooth at the start of every fight, not just to, you know, ma minimize the amount of time that we spend, but because 
if we do that and then we get hits, uh, we do get more charges on Monstrous Tooth to begin with. So it's just the best idea possible for maximizing the number of Monstrous Tooth charges we get, I guess. We get a speed upgrade and we're gonna go down to the Wound Part 2. We, a utero part one went okay, I guess. It, it certainly could have gone a lot worse, but it, it could have gone a lot better as well. Now, this is a tough room. We have reached a dead end. So it's going to be, I think, a fairly linear path uh, to the end now. We're gonna probably, unless we have to loop left and then down, uh, we're largely just going to be going... I use Monstrous Tooth there, by the way, in case you didn't notice. In case you missed the big boss coming down from the, the sky and falling on one of those blast assists. Uh, just wanted to keep you guys informed in case you were, you know watching this while you're doing each other doggy style or something. I guess you could both look at the screen in that situation, so... Truth be told, I don't really know what I'm talking about. Oh, there's another uh, piece of stupid damage for us, which is terrible. I've only got... Th I can take two more hits safely. Three more hits will kill me. But that's okay. Make sure we kill the fetuses. Get the bomb and continue moving onwards. Uh, if, if only Chubb traveled through rocks, this would be much better. But mostly I'm just hanging out right here. Letting Peeper's Eye do the dirty work. Anytime these guys get out of line, I can step in and do some damage to them. But Peeper's Eye is going to be my eye in the sky here. Allowing me to do damage to them without actually risking damage myself. Oh, there we go. That went surprisingly well. Hopefully this is our way to the boss room. We got a tri-laser room. Ah, there's a little damage that I probably shouldn't have taken. Back down to two and a half hearts. It's a hard room though, admittedly. There we go. Little Chad, please hook me up with some more vitality here, because I'm finding myself uh, a little bit nervous about our future prospects long term. Even short term, the Mom's Heart boss fight shouldn't be too bad. We've got 12 bombs, that's an adequate amount. It's not a ton, but it's an adequate amount moving forward. It's three and a half hearts should be enough, uh, but you know, things change. So Peeper, we can just walk this guy into Peeper's eye. This will be a cognitive test, it's like playing Brain Age. You gotta do things the opposite way that we normally do. Okay, just put him here. Beautiful. Not beautiful, maybe, but functional. And a bomb here will allow us to get to this chest, which hopefully contains more keys and red hearts. Safety cap. Not really that useful. Alright, let's see if we're able to get out of this. These lasers are going to present a problem, but once they're dead, we're going to be able to get into this permanent bomb state. And I'm going to wait to drop Monstro's Tooth. I know that sounds crazy, Despite what I just said, or in in light of what I just said about using Monstro's Tooth as soon as possible uh, to maximize the number of charges you get. To be honest, I don't know if I'm making the right decision here. But my thinking is we'll drop it when we fail to kill both of the enemies in one go. The bombs are effectively acting like a explosive Monstro's Tooth here. So again, we could use Monstro's Tooth on this single zombie. That seems like a waste, though. I'm probably gonna use it maybe if like Chubb comes out while the boss is going. Or sorry, while like Mom's heart is still firing. Uh, cause that will represent a problem for me. Now, okay, we're gonna drop it because she's gonna be in the permanent, uh, bomb state. And that allowed us to do like half of her remaining health. I'm just trying to ignore Duke of Flies, who is actually now dead, surprisingly. Very good fight! I- and we got through the- the womb both levels fairly quickly. Now it's time to go up to the cathedral and fight Isaac, which... It's gonna be interesting. We're gonna save our... Oh, that, I really did not want that to be a dead end. We're gonna save our um, key. I didn't want to open that golden chest back there because, you know, there's always a chance that we pick up some good items in the chest. Again, in the chest, all bets are off. If we get Polyphemus in the chest, we're taking it. If we get another crack at quad shot, we're taking it. Uh, just because, uh, you know, I'm using my own... Uh, that was so bad. We're using, I'm using my own uh, distinction right here. My own judgment, if you will. Uh, and we're underpowered right now, relative to where we would need to be to even have a chance at the chest. So if you just want to see me die at the chest, uh, then by all means I'll give up a Polyphemus when we get there. But if you want to see this actually have a chance, and actually be a balanced run, and probably provide more entertaining gameplay, uh, I think that's what's going to need to happen. So I'm hoping that on this run, uh, on this map I should say, we just go low and then loop around? That could be uh, the situation here. That's bad damage. There's no good damage to take at this point in the game, so I don't know why I say it's bad damage, but... Bad damage is preventable damage, I guess. Mo that was a poor monstrous tooth, and we are dead! Wow, that happened surprisingly quickly. But in any case, 
Thank you to Little Mikey Felcher for the like a boss suggestion. I hope you don't think that I'm actually trying to like alpha you by calling you Little Mikey Felcher. I just thought it was funny. You're a cool dude in my books because you came up with a like a boss challenge run. If you want to be like Mikey Felcher and have your run featured on the show, just leave it in the comments and I will do the ones that I deem most visible, absurd, hilarious, etc, etc, uh, as I deem appropriate. But again, as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.